All right. Welcome to uh, the Vale Music Conference podcast series brought to you by Vale Music Group. We're here with Dan Emmons. Uh, Dan's past, he was at Albright and he helped revive their school's record label, Lion Records, in his senior year when he was the uh, president, I believe, mm -hmm. of, of the music group there. And mm -hmm. we're going to talk a little bit about that and talk a little bit about what you're doing now. But let's start with Lion Records. Okay. Um, I just want to know, what was the state of the record label when you entered into uh, the presidency? Well, there wasn't any record label at that point. Uh, when I came into Albright as a freshman, uh, the program was running pretty well, and it was something that I aspired to, to try and get into by my senior year. And... By the time my senior year rolled around, nothing was going on. So I would say about the beginning of the senior year was when uh, we started taking things seriously. We, I met up with my professor, Hal Weary, who was a great guy, he's still there, uh, head of the music business department. And I just came to him and I told him, look, listen, we used to do this thing. I now have time to do this thing and I plan on making it a career. So what can I do to help out? And from that point forward, they kind of just put responsibility in my hands. And f uh, I don't know if it was the best idea to fund me, but they did. And they trusted me and uh, kind of just revived it. Signed two artists from the uh, from the talent that was in the school. Kind of did a American Idol type contest. And the first two artists well, it was actually a band called Morningwood. And the other band, the other artist was uh, this girl, Jill, who was a piano player. And we ended up releasing both them off of iTunes. And uh, just, I think they believe after I left, they started publishing around it as well. All right. So uh, you had a music business degree as well as a business mm -hmm. degree. Um, how do you think that the music business degree affected it differently than just the business side of the record label? How, what I'm saying is how has your musicality how did that influence your working with your school's label? Uh, I'm not. I believe that it put me in the right path. <laughs> excuse me, the right path for it, in the sense that uh, I had kind of a background in management and a different background in booking and things like that due to the courses I was taking. So, in a sense, I had a general idea of what a record label does. So, because of that, I was kind of able to pull from what I had learned in the past to bring it into the future. Okay, and with uh, the record label, when did that go south? Was that done when you were in, or by the time that you had become a senior, or how did that work? Exactly? Well, it kind of died out after uh, my sophomore year, and it was about a year between, I would say, my junior year was when I brought the question up, but, uh, but that whole junior year, it just, there was none. What happened that made it go under? I believe it was some professors leaving, uh, okay. and the professors that were majorly involved with it were no longer there. So, so uh, the professor that you mentioned helped you uh, get it back up. Yes, he how was, weird. He was, was he not involved with the first? He wasn't even at, uh, part of the staff. Okay, I understand. Until my my end of my junior year, beginning of my senior. Okay, and what all did he help with? Like what what was his everything? Role, really, it was really it. Was, there was a lot of nights where it was like. I'd come in uh, after what be it like rugby practice or something like that, and I would hang out with him for hours and just be like, well, this is what I want to do. He'd be like, you're crazy. And I'd be like, well, okay, how about this? And he'd be like, okay, you're getting closer. And then we, it was just brainstorming, brainstorming, then hours and hours of hard work, and it kind of came together. Well, talking about rugby, you had quite the load your senior year. You yeah. did sports. You had a job at a credit union, I believe. Yeah. How did you How did you balance everything? That's like the curse of all college students. It was. It, that's kind of that. That's kind of what it is. Is just finding that balance. I was able to work that work at the credit union, and I specifically took that job because I thought it would teach me something about social networking, and that was what my job there was: marketing social media. So if I was forced to be in an office all day, I could learn. So I took that opportunity to learn as much as I could about social media, uh, research and everything like that. Rugby was just something that for all those stresses of college and everything else that are going on, <laughs> it helps you get out a lot of that stress out. And of course, the partying is quite fun as well. Uh, and then the record label was just every other time, everything, any time I had a free moment was pretty much the record label. Right. So your work as a, a social media consultant or manager or what, what was it was It there? was originally supposed to be an internship position and okay. technically I stole someone's internship position <laughs> that did not, it was supposed to be for like digital media major or something okay. like that and I just kind of showed up and I was like, listen, 
I know I'm not a digital media major. I'm a music business major. I uh, got a background in business, but you're paying. I currently work at what was basically the McDonald's of Albright. Can I work here, please? And they were just like, oh, I checked out my resume and saw that I had a lot of commitment as far as just working throughout high school and college. And they just gave me the shot. Yeah, and your work with the social media and digital media there, how did that help with the record label and with you know all the stuff that you've been doing since then? Well, I think it kind of gave me a background to really, uh, f- really find out why social media is as good as it is at what it does. It really helps you engage not only your clientele and customers, but people that are going to be your customers, could possibly be your customers, or uh, just build a relationship with something that is a company. Something as cold and something as calculated as what would be a bank or a credit union uh, and to get people interested in a bank or a credit union. It was like the ultimate challenge. Like I, when, when you're dealing with music, it's a lot easier to get someone to say, hey, click on my YouTube video. Hey, click on the SoundCloud link, blah, blah, blah. But when you really wanna get someone involved and interested in a credit union, that is a challenge. That is an absolute challenge. So, um. Most school record labels are associated with like big old state schools. I think uh, Miami has one. There's ju- there's just a bunch. What is different and more challenging about being at a smaller school and trying to start a record label? Hmm. I think it actually worked in my advantage. The fact that there was competition, but I don't want to say that <clears throat> I don't want to say that the kids at Albright weren't exactly hungry. Uh, but it kind of their lack of jumping on something gave me an opportunity to jump on something. And I knew from the jump that I wanted to do it. So I think the difference would be that the bigger schools have better funding. The bigger schools have most likely better networking as far as what their professors and everybody else has built. However, uh, a smaller school gave me the opportunity as an individual to jump on it and really take the reins. What, what kind of advice would you give to like a smaller uh, school label, kind of like the Veil Records here that's just starting out? What kind of advice do you have for? I would say um, it's tough. It's it's tough. Uh, I saw who you released, you guys released. Uh, it was very it was a classical type piece. Um, I would say to get people interested, especially in the program, especially students that are coming up, um, and you have talent on campus. Utilize the talent that you have on campus, uh, aside from the professors. And uh, I would, I believe that if you give the the people around this area the opportunity to share their talents musically, then it can branch out. So I would say, if you have a rock band that's on there, that should be the next move, or the hip hop act that should be the next move. Whatever is a current form, and you can get people behind and a school behind to push. That's really what the target should be. So at Albright, you mentioned the uh, the kind of American Idol thing mm-hmm. that you had. So was that your main method of choosing your acts that you would support? Yeah, we had about three rounds. Uh, one was just a uh, like a small room such as this, and people came in, performed, and uh, we eliminated people just like that way. Uh, there was a small competition at our uh, like cafe, and then the final competition was in the chapel, which was like. Uh, I believe a couple thousand people could fit in there. So, so uh, how hard is it to, you know, when you're when you're with like a big old record label, mm. yeah, and you see these little artists, it's okay, it's pretty easy to say, get out of here, we don't want you. But when it's like your peers, how how difficult is that, and how did you get get past that, or was I, it not that difficult? I was cold, man. <laughs> I was really cold. I was just like, listen, you're not gonna make it, and I'm just and I and I, and I, and I I'm not. It's not like I had any right to tell any of these people they weren't good. I was just like, this is what I'm trying to do, and either you're gonna, you know, be on that level, or you're not gonna be on that level. And I'm not saying it, it would never be a sense of like, be like, don't just give up. It was like, all right, you're not here right now. These guys are here right now. They're ready to move with that. Just keep practicing, and you'll be on that level. Just give it some time. Cool. Well, uh, let's talk a little bit about what you're doing now. See, you kind of you brought a little prop. Yeah, got that mag. We are uh, Philadelphia-based music magazine, formerly a Ridge Ovation for 10 years. This is what the team I jumped on after college. Um, right immediately after college, I did some booking and some things like that in the Philadelphia area. I'm from right around there. 
And uh, the booking was a little difficult, got old real quickly, <laughs> especially dealing with acts that, you know, are uh, finicky and really, if you don't really have a lot of control of the situation, it just gets old kind of quickly. But through that, I was able to meet people involved with that, Mac. Be- started as a writer, doing it for free. So, I mean, going to shows after a full day of work, and then seeing the show and grinding out, getting a piece out, done and written for these people. Eventually, I was able to meet the owner. And from that point on, I just kept hounding them, hounding them, hounding them until I got a position there. So now I'm the content manager. We were originally, when I jumped on board, we were strictly an online magazine, www.thatmusicmag.com. And since then, we've released our first print issue, with being the official magazine for a Philadelphia Folk Fest. And... Uh, covering a bunch of their artists, as well as uh, Liberty Music Fest, which is on South Street. And our next issue is going to be the What We're Excited For 2014. And we're really excited to get it out. We got, uh, I'm going to mess it up, uh, Capital Cities on the cover, I believe. I believe it was Capital Cities. And Dr. Dog's also going to be in the issue. There's a couple other acts that are nationally touring that we got interviews for as well as some Philly locals. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, uh, is it difficult, easy to get kind of an audience for, I mean, like not people don't read magazines like they used to. How difficult is it, is it to get people to read your work? Well, it's actually, it's, it's all like the balance of when I was in school doing all those different things. It's a balance of making your brand uh, ambiguous. Now that mag, like I said, started online. So our content is updated daily. We have people that'll come check out our content from national stories, but local stories as well. Everybody's friends, they can share. It's the social networking aspect of it. We are in most bars and venues in Philadelphia. We actually went up to Reading as well, Vermont, Delaware, uh, New Jersey, and we're free. And that's kind of the big thing is that we're free. But we also tie it in with promotions such as we do uh, a monthly at the Hard Rock in Philly. We uh, teamed up with Radio 104.5 to do Wednesdays, a weekly Wednesdays at Voltage Lounge in Philly. Um, We sponsored uh, multiple music festivals, including Liberty. Uh, And just basically, how much can you get your name out and visible we were we before i came on board we were pretty much a rock magazine uh since i jumped in we uh started including a little bit more hip-hop a little bit more genres and now within a year we came out with the print issue we got nominated for a philadelphia hip-hop award and you know it's just kind of rolling from there excellent cool well that's all we have time for so uh-huh. thank you very much for your time it's good always good to talk with people around our age and uh for you folks at home as always thanks for listening <laughs>